How would I describe Joe? Feisty, passionate, wickedly intelligent, driven often to the point of exhaustion, with more than a touch of the Irish. Joe is a walking historian. He loves New York like no one has ever loved New York. He told me about his experiences at Lemoyne College as a professor. He had a memory about students that he taught decades ago, the names of their parents, where they went to church, the names of the pastors. And I remember thinking to myself, that is one heck of a memory Father McShane has. Several years ago, going to the presidential inauguration at the University of Scranton, I was there representing St. Joseph's, and he uh, was there representing Fordham, but also was there as a former president of Scranton. And as we walked across the campus, I was struck by just about everybody we encountered waved or stopped to say hello to him. And it had been several years since he had been president there, but it was very clear the impact that he had on people. And Joe is a people person, and he makes everybody feel special. Joe McShane is one of the great Jesuit presidents. He challenged Trenton to think bigger, and he literally transformed Fordham from a reputable regional university to a national powerhouse committed to what he often described as bothered excellence. Joe built modern day Fordham academically, physically, and financially. During his tenure, the university raised almost a billion dollars and dramatically expanded the facility's footprint. For Joe, however, it has always been about two things, mission and students. When I was in the process of taking on the very daunting task of filling Father McShane's shoes and becoming president of Fordham, the one question he had for me was, will you love them? He brought such heart and warmth and humor to his leadership here and was absolutely beloved by the students, the staff, the faculty. Father McShane cared and cares deeply, of course, about Jesuit higher education, but he cares about all of American Catholic higher education. He's very dedicated, for example, to the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities. He was a regular presenter and a champion, really, of Catholic higher education. Not just the brand name schools or the big schools that everyone's heard of, but the smaller schools as well, and those jewels that really make a difference in the lives of so many students. There was no one that was more effective in working with political leaders on behalf of young scholars with regard to access, affordability, outcomes, financial aid, policies that affect the well-being of, of young people throughout the state. He was the senior statesman, the conscience of Albany when it came to anything related to higher education and making it affordable and accessible. Joe McShane is recognition adverse. So receiving the Hesburgh Award is as uncomfortable for him as he is deserving. When he balks at such awards, I usually say to him, suck it up and smile. It's not about you. But Joe, this one is all about you. You cannot escape our admiration and you better not leave early. I wanna thank him for his encouragement, for his support. Um, it means a great deal to me, and I know others feel the same. He will go down as one of the greatest leaders in the history of Catholic education in the United States of America. And for me, it is so humbling. It is such a profound honor to know him, to learn from him, to laugh with him. He's changed my life, and I know he's changed the lives of so many people. You accept this award, I know, on behalf of all of the people who, like you, have worked so hard for this field, this world that you love. So thank you for being willing to endure this moment and this night and to let us tell you how proud we are, how humbled we are by your example.
I want to shine the spotlight on you. The scores of women and men religious and the hundreds of talented and devoted lay women and lay men who have led and continue to lead our member institutions with discerning wisdom, deep love, and great effectiveness. You keep our sacred and noble mission alive. And so my friends, let me end by thanking you from my heart for allowing me to be what I wanted to be this evening, your shameless, grateful, and proud public relations officer. Thank you for this honor. Most of all, thank you for making the institutions that you serve, places where character is formed, talent is tested, and hope is born in every generation for the greater glory of God and the service of his people.